Hello, welcome to another Alpha Strike replay video of the Proto Mech series for Battletech. Yes, we finally got past mechs. We're into it. We're doing things. Yes. Different stuff. Yes. So we uh, we've done some videos talking about how they came about, who yep. makes them, and all that sort of and thing. And they're pretty funky. Yep. If you haven't watched them, go back and watch that. The actual models we will be we will be talking about each of the units later. But for this video, we're just going to talk about the rules some some general rules some specific rules mm -hmm. and just work through a little bit of stuff so mm -hmm. shall we swoosh and get into it yes sir protomex swoosh away <laughs> <laughs> i hear a silver you've been getting a lot of practice with that it's coming on really well and the swoosh yes you know, I'm, I'm, it's gonna I'm be great gonna to start using the other hand or this one's gonna build up and i'm not gonna have any swoosh <laughs> <on> this one <laughs> That's uh, what it is. You're all ready for aerospace. Yeah. You swish us in. Okay, <laughs> um, bit of a sidetrack there. All right, so we're talking about how the rules are for Protomex in your games of Battletech. Yes. And maybe some tips here and there we Ooh. might come up with as well. You'll yeah, have to yes. sort that out because I've got no idea what I'm doing with these things. Good. They are cool, though. They are cool. Okay, so basically they're a bit of a hybrid between infantry vehicles and mechs and mechs like a, a yeah they use they everything. use some rules from each of the others but they have they have some of their own unique rules so battletech wouldn't be battletech if you didn't have the table to roll on <laughs> or to reference so yes there's plenty of those for a proto mech unfortunately Dif different sections to look at uh, yeah. bookmarks to make and all that sort of stuff okay uh dear you don't have to use the same unit or same type of protomech when you create them so they're, they're designed to be worked in a group of five so that's a point so like like the like the clan elementals mm. five dudes makes one point same purpose as this and they don't have to all be the same no you can have whatever you want nice i was worried about that you could i mean i don't know it depends how many you're going to have it might, well, might be beneficial to have five of the same because yeah. they all work together same speed same I mean, weapons you know what you're some doing. of the ones that i've been looking at they'd be very very cool if you took like two points of exactly the same thing and just boom you could do a lot of cool stuff yeah, yeah. um but you don't have to which is very very awesome basically you work out your battle value and you can adjust the pilot, like the gunnery and things like that. They don't have a piloting skill. No, because you never have to make piloting checks. No, because it, it acts as an extension to their own body. That's, yeah. that's how they do it. So it's got its own little gyroscope in it, of course, I'd imagine. That's, which, that sort of thing. Yeah, which is what, like, when I read that, I was like, I want Primax mm. because you never have to roll piloting checks to possibly fall over. I think even when they get their legs blown off, they're not considered to have fallen over. So you get a leg blown off, you're just considered immobile. Sort you of slow thing. down and yeah. all that sort of thing. So, yeah. It's very cool. So speaking of movement, all right, mm -hmm. so they basically work essentially like a mech. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what it is. So when you, when you activate the unit, you're activating all five. Yes. Or however many you got left. Okay. So you, you have to activate them all together. They're because they're bigger than battle armor, they take up more space, so they're classified as vehicles for stacking purposes. Yes. Yeah. All right. So that means you can have two of them in one hex. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. It is very good. That's, yeah. That's really cool because you can get a lot of them into, you can get a lot of these combat units into a smaller space to get. Yeah. To and they don't have through. to move like synchronized or, or be in any sort of formation or anything like that. There's no. no coherency or anything like that. You can have one run off that way and one run off there and two of them stay back here. It's yep. not a problem. Yep. And they don't skid either. So yeah. they can run on yes. your page and it's fine. It's awesome. It's really good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> They, they can't go up more than one level at a time, so they're like vehicles yeah. there, but they pay mech prices to do it. So when you go up one level in a vehicle, you're playing plus, plus two movement points. In a mech or a proto-mech, you're only playing, paying one. Yes. Uh, or plus one. Which maximizes their speed yeah. and flexibility on the field, which is really good. Yeah, the mechs can go up two levels. Proto mechs not allowed. No, but that's okay. But that's okay. You can you can fit proto mechs with jump jets. Yep, as well, so which is can, um, very very cool. <laughs> Let's see. So proto mechs will have 
they have what they call a main weapon. Yeah, right? I think I think if a weapon is a certain weight or whatever it is, it has to be a main. A main, main gun. We'll go into construction rules later, so we're just focusing on this. So it has yeah. a, a main gun. Uh, there, I think uh, your main gun is in the chest, or it's protected by the. I have to have yeah. a sheet. Sorry, it's um like one of the. It would be the 30, 30, 60 technical readout. That's where they first sort of came into existence. Yeah. <laughs> so it tells you a little bit about uh, where they came from. We talked about that in the previous video. If you haven't watched that, it'll, it'll come up as a share. But, um, I think the main gun had its own hit location. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. So they've, they've got the hit location table there. Yeah, main gun. Main gun has the main gun on it. Yep. And then you've got legs, right arm, torso, torso, etc., etc. Yep. So Can the... you tell everybody what species you are on, please? You mean you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> me and the viewers. <laughs> we're, we're looking at, I mean, the, the protomech rules are scattered throughout Total War. So when you go through the movement rules for Total War, It'll have specifics for different units, what they can do and where they can go. And protomechs are, are through there. But the protomech section goes from 184 to 187 hmm. uh, in total war. Um, right. So that's that's anyway. specific rules. So, yeah, that's right. So they have, probably to make it a little bit clearer before we start talking about weapons, is the fire arcs. Okay, so the fire arcs work exactly the same as a battle mech. Okay, yes. it is a small battle. The main gun, I think, has to be in the forward arc or something like that. But you've got your, your lighter weapons can go into the arms and things like that, which is just like a normal mech. If you spread your weapons out or they start losing locations, then you're still going to have some weapons left over. Mm. But if you start losing arms, the main weapon can start getting affected. It gets penalties for shooting. Yep. So you've got to keep that in mind. And there's a there's a thing in the in the thirty fifty one that shows you actual like readout style things. But yes, there's so a, they're, they're blank ones. Yeah, there's a blank record sheet in uh, Tech Manual in as tech well. Tech Manual. Yeah, I'm pretty. Oh, you might be able to download blank ones from the, uh, the BattleTech.com. I'm, I'm pretty the sure there's some there's something somewhere there. that you can download them. Yeah, movement for vehicles and all that sort of thing. Going into buildings as well. They will actually do a little bit of damage to a building when they go into it. Mm -hmm. But they don't take any damage themselves from no. it. It doesn't matter. So they actually they pay one one movement point? No, two movement points to enter a building. Yeah. And then only one to change elevation, like infantry. Yeah. So they're basically using infantry rules to move through the building, but when yep. they enter a building hex, they deal one point of damage to that hex. Oh one. Okay. And they have to pay an additional one movement point for Moving into the hex. into it, yeah. Uh, move through buildings. Oh, through. So for infantry, it's one movement point. Yeah. Um, for protomex, it's two movement points. Um, plus the, the whatever it's it's plus. Yeah. Right, so um, they've still got that stacking limit. If you've got two of them in there, they still count as like vehicles, but they can actually just change their elevation as infantry inside. Yeah. The building. <laughs> Let's imagine that. It's like, it's like what's that robot cop, the old Ed 209, he's going through yeah. the stairwells and everything. It'd, it'd be Ed 209 walking through the building. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you've got a thing where you can you can have battle armor with jump jets come into a building from a different level than ground level. But yes. Protomex aren't allowed to do that. They they can't do the jump entry thing that battle armor can. Yeah, they're, a bit too, they're bigger. Yeah, they're a lot bigger. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's um, still good though. They could still jump on top. Or yeah. Whatever. But their costs, their costs for actually changing elevation and everything is so cheap. It doesn't really. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. You only pay one. So. It's um they they are inflicting damage for changing levels within the building as well. Okay. So they're dealing one point of damage to a building hex after uh, for Ooh. each level it enters. <laughs> um, they follow the rules for mechanized infantry when changing levels. Uh, which oh, I think is more. I think must pay two ground movement points to change levels. Yep. So if a mechanized infantry unit has only one ground movement point available, it can still change levels in the building using minimum movement. 
but it costs it two if it's got the movement points. So yeah, they're, they're better than mechs, but they're not quite as good as infantry on that sort of thing, but yeah. they still, they can freely move around. They just have to spend a little bit more movement points and they're inflicting damage as they do it. So they're, they're breaking the building as they go up through there. Hulk smash? Hulk smash. Hulk smash. Not very much, but <coughs> Hulk definitely smash. So because they have the same height as a vehicle, level one, level one. they don't get partial cover. No. All right. But they're not you restricted. You can either see them or you can't. Yeah. They're yeah. not restricted to like not going into woods yeah. and things like that. So they don't have any of those movement type. I think they can even go in water coming. Uh, no. No? That's one of the things that stops them. That's interesting. I, I did not think of that before I, I actually said it. I'm like, oh, I have to find out in water. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dear, oh dear. Anyway. Anyway, anyway. continue on, sir. Yep. So when you shoot at a protomech, it will have its... Uh, it doesn't have a... Um, even though it has facings like a baromech, it doesn't have... It's just got its front. It's just got a hit location. Yeah. That's basically it. So it doesn't have a front and back and things like that. It's just you hit it. Yeah. It has its own hit location table. And what's interesting about this one is that there are two, two points on there, three and 11. Yep. And it says near miss, and there's a little asterisk next to it. It says basically if you do that, it rolls no damage to the target. Yeah. With so the, this with is weapon or whatever. This is 185 in total war, and it's the top proto mech hit location table. And you, you're seeing it there as three and 11 are near misses. It's um so no damage. Yeah. So you could oh, I'm going to finish this guy off with an AC twenty shell, put an end to this right now. And no. Roll a three. And roll and, a three. And it just whistles past his head. Yep. And Does you go, nothing. Oh crap. <laughs> so it's also interesting to know that if you are a battle mech and you take a kick against them because you can you do physical attacks against them the same way you do it against a vehicle. So if you look at the ve we talked about vehicles and things like that and physical attacks and charging and ramming and stuff. Yep. If you get a near miss, it means you haven't made contact, but you don't have to do a piloting check. Yeah. All right. For a, you, normally, you have to do it with a miss kick, but with this one, you don't have to worry about it. Which is cool. Yeah. I like handy. that. But having two, two locations on there that are near miss that just voids damage, that's that's pretty good. It's very that cool. It's pretty good. I like it. I think, um, I think that could be very, very handy at some points. In the game, there really mm. interesting to note that you can't with the um, there are some weapons that ignore that near miss result, so like artillery that affects the hex, things like that. Boom, yeah. The, if, if you're hitting a hex, then it's gonna take the damage, isn't it? Really, yeah. and other situations like if a building collapses, you're gonna take the damage, you can't, can't avoid that. You're not Spider Man, yep. you just zip around and stuff like that. And targeting computers, oh, there you go. They're so small, the targeting computers cannot be used to make attacks against specific hit locations. They're too small. They're big, but they're too small. Too small to do that. Yep. You still get your minus one, but Correct. you can't do the special aim shot thing where you get like a plus three and you pick a location. Yeah. So you can't do that with these guys. They're just itty bitty. Yeah. But here's, here's the thing, you know, it's like these, so far it's proven to me that they are indeed a classic example of a situation where it's um, necessity. You yeah, know, it breeds. That what, it's what, just, how's that, what, how's that? Yeah, how does that go again? Uh, necessity is the mother of invention. Of invention. That's yeah. right. Yeah, I mean the clans have been sort of doing that for ages, but yeah, it's, it's um so good. <laughs> they're but very they will, very cool. But they will make. They probably will make. Now that they're out, they'll make a targeting computer that can. It's anti proto mech or something. Maybe a specific targeting computer that only works on a certain unit type or something. Yeah, that could work. That could be interesting. <laughs> All right. So with damage, okay, you've got a the hit location table. So if you have, if you have, we'll put that up on the screen again if it's come off. So there, yep. So there's your. So don't worry about your three and your elevens. We've talked about that. Yep. For the other locations, you've got main gun, so right arm. You got legs. You got torso. So torso is basically the main. Yeah. Part. There's no left, or right, and center. It's just. Torso. Six, seven, and eight is yeah. torso. So torso, yeah. 
And you've got a... Um... Legs, left arm, so... And head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the majority of the hits are going to be on the the torso there. And that, That's right. remember, is where your pilot is. So you, you've got to be a bit careful about that. But, I mean, the majority of the hits are going in there. That's just something you have to work with. Yeah. Um, I can tell you that there are some protomex that are able to take, like, a Gauss rifle hit to the chest and still keep going. They still, in fact, have some armor left. So there are some pretty pretty powerful units there <laughs> when you think about it. He's counting the dots on the blank sheet. It's like, no, what's up? Because I, th I think there's, um, <laughs> I think the gray ones are internal. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so they, they've basically combined like your, your outside and your inside as one one thing. So yeah. once you start colouring on all the, the clear ones, you start applying so it to the internal. There's 18 clear, like non-internal locations there, like armour circles there. Mm -hmm. So that's technically a Gauss rifle. Yeah. So that's 18. And then there's two, four, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine um, grade circles, which is your worst ones, yeah. your internal ones. That's right. Hmm. So they can they can survive a, an act twenty and only take a couple of internal points. Yep, which will still give them a, a roll on the. Um, I think they have a critical or something. You go inside. Damage. Yeah, so it destroys the armor location, the white circles, and then goes internal. Right, damage. So it uses the transfer to the torso. So anything that's not the torso it goes to the torso. If you lose it, just like a mech, you know, you lose the arm, it goes to that, that side torso. Yep. Then you roll on the determined critical hit table whenever the internal structure to a location is damaged. So you keep that old thing. So seven, you want more than seven, basically, for it basically, to, to do anything. Yeah. Yep. So each location has a number of critical hit boxes on the record sheet. You mark these off from left to right, and each... Each time a player crosses off a shaded box, the warrior takes a point of damage. So talking about mech warriors, they have six, they can take six points of damage or something before they die. Yes. Right? Okay. So with these guys, it's uh, it works a bit different. You take out you take out locations that have those dots. So the left arm can has if you have a look on yours that you're looking on, it's yeah. four. Four unshaded, and you've got two shaded. On, on the, on arm, the arms. On the yeah. arm, right? Yep. Okay, so let's say right arm. You take five points of damage from a laser. Yep. Because it's gone inside, the pilot takes a hit. Okay. It just takes the hit. And then they've got a six limit as well. Yes. So, exactly so. And so consciousness they, check. Yes, so they do a conscious. So you take you take out locations rather than yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a bit different. It's, it's it's not necessarily like a head hit or anything no. like that, but because they're connected so intimately with the unit, if you get enough damage in that one location, you cause the feedback thing that that does the damage. Yeah. So yeah. That's, so, that, so that's there's two there's two hits yeah. just on an arm. So it is quite brutal. But obviously, because you're sitting in the chest, the chest has got heaps of them, so it could just. Brrr. One yeah, well, that's one there's, with a big enough gun. There's nine there that are that are filled in, and like I say, fourteen. And I'm assuming that that is a maximum. That's not necessarily how many you're going to have on a specific protomech. This no. is just because this is a blank sheet. You've got a, a maximum there of about fourteen. Yeah, uh, eighteen and nine. But as you remove locations, as well as damaging the pilot, it also reduces that unit's capabilities to be able to you know, shoot weapons and effectively fight. But that's the same yeah. with everything. It's so the, just a matter of, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's got them listed on the blank sheets. So you can see there the main gun, the first hit, the main gun's destroyed. Boom, gone, yep. done. Nice and simple. So the right arm, uh, the first hit, the right, there's plus one to hit. So your main gun and all your other weapons are plus one to hit. Yeah. And then right arm destroyed on the second hit. Right, and then you, you've got a, a similar list for pretty much everything there. Yeah, and your legs um, and torso. So it's interesting to note that your jump jets are in the torso. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So you take damage there. But like a mech or whatever, if he's 
overheating and he slows down, he can still jump the maximum. That's what's because they're so they're big enough that they can separate it, but they just couldn't do it with these. No. So you take you take the taking the damage, you're going to slow down. In well, that's I mean, if you if you get a location completely destroyed on a mech and that location had jump jets, then your jump jets are gone. They're gone. That's you, right. You, your movement reduces so that all the jump jets are in the torso for these guys, and once you start taking damage in there like full-on hits, critical hits, you yeah. are losing jump capability. So the first one gives you a minus one to jump, and the second one gives you half your jump, and then the third one that's destroys it. the protomech. That's right. But that's it. But nasty, it's nasty really stuff. Really it's, um... But they, with their physical attacks, they can... They, they don't punch or kick... Well, they, they do, but it's, they call it a frenzy attack, don't they? Yeah, and you, you still don't need piloting. Technically, no. so there's no piloting skill checks. This is just an attack. It's it's very cool. I love it. Basically, they scratch and punch and yeah, cut and do whatever. Kick, kick and kick. everything they've got, they the they little, use. Get under your nails and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> that really, <laughs> they just uh, they do damage based on their weight class. Yeah, I believe, how much they weigh. So if if we want to quote there, so uh, they don't make. Physical attacks, they can make a single frenzy attack that combines a punch, a kick, and anything else the proto mech can muster. The net effect of this effort is a single attack with a damage value of one for proto mechs that weigh two to five tons, or two for proto mechs that weigh six to nine tons. The base two hit number for that attack is a four, with a standard modifier for kicking, which, if you remember our physical attack thing, is a minus two. Yeah. Um, can only be made against an adjacent target in the front firing arc. If they twisted the torso, the attack can only be made into the rotated front firing arc. Yeah. Uh, never forces the target to make a piling skill roll because the protomech does not have piling skill. So you're not hitting them hard enough to make them fall over or anything like that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, I mean, unless all five... No, that's still only 10 points of damage, isn't it? Oh, well. Uh, so the attack hits, consult the mech location, uh, kick location table for a target on the same level. And if the target is a mech one level lower, then you get to use a punch location table. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. So you can do two points to the head if you can roll a six. <laughs> Imagine a mech just walk along the building, suddenly this big fucker. <laughs> <laughs> just, just proto mech leaps <laughs> out. <and> <laughs> <laughs> Bang! <laughs> it's Ultron. <laughs> Does one damage, dude fails his consciousness check and down. And down he goes, oh, imagine that. That would be cool. I reckon that guy would get his own line of the remembrance with that. That's legendary. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> uh dear. Um, they've got physical attacks back against them are basically the same as a vehicle. Yeah. Um, so you have to be within a certain range of them in order to be able to target them with things like that. Mm. Um, Go for the kick. Yeah. <laughs> Kick's always good. Kick's always <laughs> has quality. Or if one of them's standing at a, an, an, like a building there getting ready to jump out, you just get your hatchet and just, just boom, yep. Cut it in half. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> Kids watch this. What are you doing? Children watch this. What are you doing, Taryn? Good Lord. Oh, dear, dear. That's, That's about it, really. But they're just, they're very, they're very interesting. Very, very interesting. Very cool. You know, I think uh, they they have the same issues with fire as everyone else. Yeah, that was something I should probably look we at. Well, actually, yeah, we're looking at the water, weren't we? Uh, the water. They're in the piloting skill check uh, table, or the 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 oh, movement or something cost so. there. It doesn't say it's restricted. Um, and I am assuming that because it doesn't say it's restricted. They can move into it. Consult um, the whole book. <laughs> there, so you've got depth zero. Um, the only one that's prohibited is naval vessels. Depth one, it's plus one level change MP cost not included. So you still have to pay your level change plus the plus one to move into depth one. But only infantry and vehicles are banned. Depth two, infantry vehicles and industrial mechs are banned. But it doesn't say Protomex. Wow, okay. So the only ones that I can see on there that Protomex are banned from is moving two levels in a turn. So you can't change more than one level at a time. 
and three levels of a turn. So you can't change more than one level all the time. They're the only two there that I can see. Guys, if you've got Total War, you've got everything you need to be able to include basically any proto mech. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, you were saying there are different generations, but that's just a tech level thing, right? They still follow the same basic rules? Correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so they might have, um, like the later models had winging ground effect capabilities. Nice. And like boosters for extra jumping and things like that. Jump boosters. Because the technology sort of progressed, so it was, it was open to them later on. So the later generations have other hoopy doopy tech like stuff that they can do but honestly the first gen stuff that we're going to start with they are very good yeah for, for that tech level for that year they were just yeah re they're really 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 good they don't have heat sinks they don't have a heat build up thing so i'm i'm interested to see the sort of thing that would happen if they were in fire but i think you'd have to look for fire in tac ops to be certain uh we found it. Well, Taryn's found it. We found it. So All praise to Taryn. Page, page 43 in TAC Ops. Um, just more evidence that this is all fragmented and needs sorting out. Like um, my brain. Yeah. So <laughs> in the fire section under advanced ground movement, you've got a protomech section there. Um, so anytime a protomech ends its mo movement phase on the ground, in a burning hex or moves along the ground into a burning hex, the controlling player must get a result of eight or higher on a 2d6 roll. Ah. Either all fails, roll once on the protomech hit location table. Note that a near miss result is still a near miss. Ah, luck. And so the fire would have no effect. That location is destroyed. Automatically mark off the shaded box Ooh. furthest to the right in that location and the hit location is a critical hit section of the record sheet. So as we mentioned a bit before, they've got first hit, second hit, third hit on yeah. these things here. So you'd automatically be crossing off the furthest thing. So it's automatically done. The furthest thing. Yeah. This side. Straight yeah. away. Yeah. Wow. So if you end your movement or move through a burning hex with oh. a proto mech and you don't get an eight plus on a 2d6 and you somehow roll torso seven eight nine which is the well, most six average. seven eight six seven eight six seven eight if you get six, six seven eight you're like... dead oh you would not do that don't go through you fire do, that. do not go through fire with oh. these guys because it is not worth it um yeah no that's it that that is, that is their whole section right there under fire okay right wow that's nasty so infernos do what infernos do We've yeah, well, talked about yeah. Infernos, so they st they will still do the same thing to them. Um, I'm pretty sure they still get that role, yeah. um, which is which is horrible. Right. So, ve uh, so, yeah. that, so vehicles would also follow. Yeah, so remember they, they have that. So the controlling the player thing. gets an eight or higher on a 2d6. If it fails, you must automatically roll on the front rear column of the appropriate unit's critical hits table with a minus two for combat vehicles, no modifier for support vehicles, uh, with the armor chassis and controls modification or a bar of 10. Wow. In which case it's treated as a combat vehicle. Right. So, there you go. yeah, so low level support vehicles get no modifier, but combat vehicles get a minus two, which means you're not going to get a, a 12 or but, whatever. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. you're less likely to get complete damage, but you can be destroyed even with a minus two, I'm pretty sure. Mm. Um, so fire is bad. Just avoid it. Fire right, is that's the best thing. Smaller <laughs> units in fire, not good. Not a, no, not good. Not a good idea. Mechs are basically your only real option for fire because that's just horrible. That is horrible. That is not good. Yeah. Um, Don't let that put you off proto mechs, <laughs> because yeah, when we do these, when we have these videos coming out, talking about the Gen One and all that sort of thing and their stories and whatever, yeah, they are pretty cool. But if, cool. if you know someone who takes a lot of proto mechs, mm. starting fires is probably a good idea. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. That's that's nasty. All right. Mm. So thank you very much for uh, joining us for this video. Please, yes. Please subscribe to our Do newsletter. And bells you'll be and able to likes. Find everything. And yep. And you can like us here and all that sort of stuff. We, we had the... You had a sale on. It was that a, finished so that, now. That finished. Yep. 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 There was okay. always new stuff happening though. So come and check out our live that we do. 
at yes. the beginning of every month, all right? Yes. It's usually on our Sunday. But There's one coming up soon, and, and we had an idea. Shall we share the idea? We share the idea. She's not We've had nod from the uh, executive. Our editing department would like us to share this idea with you. <laughs> so a while ago, somebody suggested a... Um, not really a scenario idea, more of a combat type thing, but heavy assault mechs with very poor heat management and loaded up with Inferno rounds because Inferno rounds have a different um, role on the heat table thing. <laughs> yes. And if they explode, they do even more heat, it's which is just ridiculous. I made a couple of atlases. I, I made an atlas variant of... Uh, with, that's like very, very bad at heat management and has some serious amounts of heat build up and is loaded up with Inferno ammo. And we're going to fight them live. <laughs> if you are in that live, if you can make it to that live and you can get in the chat, uh, then in the chat, the live chat only for that, that live video. So make sure you're there. We're going to be fielding scenario ideas. You can just throw out like a, a a full scenario thing. You can chuck out a, an idea like assault mechs with bad heat management. <laughs> <laughs> I made them really, really bad. You, you're going to laugh when you see them. It's probably going to be like two rounds and we're dead. But um, feel free to chuck any idea for any scenario that you want to see us give a crack. Um Try not to make them too big a scale because obviously we've only got a certain amount of time to, to do it. Yeah. But I'm open to all suggestions. We're going to pick one. We're going to pick one from the chat. So if yours doesn't get picked, feel free to come back to the next live that we do and make the suggestion again. But we'll see if we can get that scenario into a workable frame and we'll... And we'll it. have a go. We'll do it for a live. Mm. Because the race was basically um, a scenario idea that, that came up because of a suggestion from someone as well. And yeah. the Inferno Titans are going to be a suggestion. And while we're playing that, we're going to take suggestions. And that's the next live that comes up. That's um, so a couple of weeks. Yeah, a couple of know. weeks from well, from recording time. From recording time. When this comes up in time. It's yeah. basically the first Sunday of every month. Yeah, first Sunday of every month. Yeah, but we'll make sure... Our editing department will make sure that there's plenty of notice so you guys know it's coming and we'll try and remind you that the scenario thing is a happening thing and hopefully we'll get something cool out of it and That's it. I won't muck it up too badly. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fine. We'll see how we go. <laughs> Thank oh, you, mate. Yeah. That's good. All good. Yeah, that, yeah, so that, that was an idea. Like a lot of fun, actually. Yeah. Right, so that's that's that one. That's Protomex. There'll be some other things that we'll come across. We're going to go through in the chats, and we'll, we'll talk yeah. about it and all that sort of thing. Comments. We're probably going to go through a bunch of the different Protomex at some point. Uh, the different generations. I'm interested to hear about different generations. Yeah. And some of the the Protomex that are in each generation would probably be a good idea. That's what we're going to do. But yeah, keep keep an eye out for those and come up with some scenario ideas for the live. And while you're watching us beat the crap out of each other with stupid mix then you can come up with another idea yes all good you can you can back a person if you want you can <laughs> say go adam or go taryn or both of you go home this is boring <laughs> <laughs> uh dear what well, once you see the atlases you know it's not going to be boring <laughs> it's going to be two turns of us walking towards each other and then someone's going to explode <laughs> it's insane Oh, good. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you, people. <laughs>